Welcome back to Cheddar News. Airlines are looking to soar as travel season prepares to pick up. Of course, with the holiday season among them is Delta Airlines, a company whose recent earnings numbers took off compared to what analysts were anticipating during the third quarter. With that, I want to send it over to Kristen with a good interview here. Alicia, thanks so much. And I am joined now by Ed Bastian, CEO of Delta Airlines, down here at the New York Stock Exchange for the first time since the pandemic. Uh, Ed, it's great to see you back. It's and great I, to be back. We are so happy to have you. We saw you ringing the closing bell. Yeah. What is the state of business right now? We're clearly in the recovery mode, uh, and it's coming back at a really nice clip. You know, it's been choppy. The, the pandemic has taught us a lot about being a little paranoid, kind of watching as to how things, if it's real or not, or if there's something else that you need to worry about. But we're, I think we're at a point now where we can see some real substantive traction. We're gonna have Europe opening uh, starting November 8th, mm -hmm. and, and that's gonna be huge for New York because all the, all the European nationals that have not been able to come to this country, the, the bookings went 10X exploded when it was announced that they could start to come back into the US. We've got business starting to back, bounce back. We're about 50% back in terms of business travel and every week it continues to get better. And I think by the holidays, by the end of the holidays, most people will travel by air at mm -hmm. that point that are gonna travel. And then I think it's a good setup for 22. Mm -hmm. Uh, so November 8th, right? That's a big, big date, date for, big I date. think, exactly your company, many companies alike, many people, people who want to travel yeah. as well. And an announcement that you're bringing more flights here to the yeah. New York area. Will that be capturing more of these travelers oh, come yes. November 8th? We are the largest airline in New York, both at JFK and LaGuardia. And we're now, we announced today that we're going to be adding 100 flights for the holiday period coming into the fall and then staying and you know going into 2022 for both international and domestic. We'll have direct service back to the top 40 destinations that New York's New Yorkers you know, prefer to travel to, <laughs> coupled with a lot of our international you know, markets, London, Paris, Amsterdam, Rome, all coming back in. So it's really exciting to be mm -hmm. back. It's been a long time for people who have seen each other. It's exciting for you to be back on the floor of the exchange here for the first time in, in a year and a half. And um, it's why we do what we do is to make people bring people together and reunite. It is so good to see uh, friendly faces back down here yeah. at the stock exchange as we work our way through this pandemic. What are you expecting this holiday travel season in terms of bookings, in terms of demand? I think demand's gonna be strong and pricing is pretty good. So I'd encourage everyone to go out if you're gonna travel, don't wait, the, the bargains are now. The bargains is you get closer into the holidays, the seats start to tighten up, the inventory starts tightening up. But whether you're going internationally, whether you're going domestically, there's going to be great opportunities. And by the way, not just great bargains on airfares, on, on hotels and resorts. And mm -hmm. I think everyone's going to be trying to make sure because this industry, hospitality, has been a bit starved for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So people are anxious and happy to see everyone return. And I encourage everyone to get out. It's, it's wonderful. I was just in London a couple of weeks ago myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be my most international, memorable international trip I've ever taken. I've been all over the world just because of the first time you're back into doing right. something and you're, you're reconnecting to what you know, mm -hmm. the gratitude that you, you get swamped with and just the emotion. It's, it's really incredible. It does give you a new perspective, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Southwest recently canceling thousands of flights. As we head into this holiday period, should customers be prepared for cancellations, delays? And yes, those higher prices if they fly your airline? Uh, not on Delta. There's not going to be any cancellations. We flew through the same storms that, that our competitor flew through. And we had two, 20 cancels and they had, you know, in the thousands. And so, you know, we've been preparing for this upcoming holiday period. We know how important it is for people to get where they are. We pride ourselves on being the most reliable airline in the sky. We are. We won the JD Power Award this year for that reason. And so we're gonna have our pilots, our, our, uh, our planes, our staff are fully ready to take on the, and uh, we've, been, we've been rehearsing for this for a number of months now. Well, traveling and traveling safely on the minds of many Americans, and your company has decided not to require vaccinations, but if you don't get vaccinated, you will have to submit to testing, yep. as well as pay $200 extra a month in health insurance. What was behind that decision? Well, you know, we're not opposed to vaccine mandates. In fact, we we're the very first company back in the spring to put a vaccine mandate in for any new employee coming to Delta. We fired 8,000 people this year, all who had to be vaccinated in order to come work for our company. But personally, and our leadership had a real hard time with people that have deep-seated concerns, and there, there, there are, 
uh, whether it's religious, medical, or, or certain other personally held convictions. And the, the, the threat of losing their job, mm -hmm. to me, felt like a very sharp object. So we tried to do it different. At Delta, we do things differently. And what the, the mandate was trying to do is for companies that don't have plans to get their, mm -hmm. their people vaccinated, we already had our plan. We were well ahead of the president by a month. And so today we're over 90% vaccinated as a company. We'll get to 95% next month. And then with any additional exemptions, we'll be effectively you know, fully vaccinated without having to go through all the divisiveness of a mandate. So it seems like uh, some of these penalties, $200 a month, has been encouraging people yeah. to get vaccinated. We, we, we were paying incentives to people to encourage them to get, to thank them for getting it. But that, that stopped at about the 75% mark with our population. Sometimes you actually have to kind of reach into someone's wallet or do something that's a disincentive for people to get off the fence and go get it done. And, and our people are, they're, they're, they're happy, they're, their voices are heard, they're respected, they, they've got a decision to make. They're not, you know, government's not making the decision for them. And I'm, I feel very comfortable with, with that we're gonna be in compliance with the, with the spirit of the mandate. Well, amid a supply chain shortages, labor shortages, we do see the price of oil rising recently surpassing $82 a barrel at its highest level in years. How is that impacting your business and fuel prices? Well, it's certainly impacting our cost structure. It's our single biggest cost outside of our employee costs or labor costs. And uh, it's doubled in the last year. And it's up 20% just in the last month and a half. So it's, it's got a big impact. In our business, we've, we've been pretty successful over time of, of figuring out how to add that to pricing over time, but there's a lag effect. And when it, when it jumps as, as, as quickly as it's done, it probably will take three, six, nine months before it will get caught into the pricing. Uptake eventually has to be passed on. It's not a cost that we can bear as, as an airline. We're already still trying to recover our own, our own business here. So it'll, it'll eventually affect pricing, but in the short term, again, I think prices are gonna be great for the holiday period. And do you pass that on one-to-one -to, -one to the consumer, or does the consumer absorb no, just about 50% of you know, that? You know, it's, it's interesting. Our business, by law, we're not allowed to put uh, any type of surcharge onto the tickets for fuel. So some industries like trucking and, uh, and freight can do that. We can't do that in our, in our business. And so we eventually have to get it into the price structure. Mm -hmm. And it just takes time for customer acceptance. This labor shortage is very real. I don't have to tell you that 20 million job openings uh, just as of about a week ago. How many open positions are there with your company now? And are you needing to offer incentives to get people hired? We're pretty much fully staffed now. Uh, we, we hired 8,000 people already. We still have some number of people to go, maybe less than 1,000 between now and the end of the year. We're going to be hiring in the next couple of years for flight attendants, for pilots, for mechanics. Over the next several years, we could hire probably another four to 6,000 people. But the big push was driven by the fact that we had 20% of our people decide to voluntarily retire at when, the, when the pandemic hit. And they did it for a good reason. We, we made a nice offer to them, but they also wanted to save the jobs for younger people. So as the business now has come back, we need to go out and bring bring staff back in, and, and that's what you see happening. Uh, we've seen the number and incidents of unruly passengers rise during this pandemic. Do you think that the FAA needs to do more to get that situation under control? I don't think there's anything the FAA can do. They've already put in some very aggressive enforcement penalties, including the risk of going to jail uh, as, a, as a federal offense. So I don't think it has, has anything to do with the FAA. I think it really it means we, we need to get more of our regular travelers back into the sky. Right now, you have a lot of new time if people traveling for the first time in the last uh, last 18 months. And, and they may not be accustomed at some level. There's a lot of frustration around wearing masks. There's political statements being made. Listen, we've been through a very emotionally, uh, you know, difficult period and, and people have been you know have, have been affected in various ways i think we've all been touched in some way with what we've been through so so you have some emotional wellness issues going on and by the way it's not just in the sky it's on the ground it's in the streets it's in the in the transit system it, it's all over and i think as we heal as a nation as people start to get back out and start to to reconnect i think hopefully that will start getting people some sense of normalcy and, and behavioral norms continuing to settle down well, we talked about rising fuel costs, rising prices of oil, but sustainability, I think a key focus Huge. for a lot of companies out there. What commitments is Delta making to sustainability? Well, you know, one, the, the last big announcement that we made right before the pandemic hit was on Valentine's Day of 2020. And then within a couple of weeks, the pandemic was, you know, we, were, we were in full survival mode. 
And what we announced is that we are going to become the world's first uh, global you know, neutral airline relative to carbon and offsets. And we we're going to be investing $100 million a year to go in and re reproduce uh, and, and, and uh, supplement the carbon that we were using, whether it's through reforestation, clean water supplies, other, other opportunities to invest in the environment to replenish what we've used. Uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, that got overwhelmed and we maintained our commitment, but our flying levels weren't that much. So we did put in $30 million last year back into the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, those are short term, you, know, you, can, you can offset for so long. And we're proud of the fact that we offset. And people that travel on Delta should know that you, you, are, you are being fully offset. We're investing, Delta is investing on your behalf. But the real opportunity is going to be around technology, developing sustainable aviation fuels. Jet fuel is 98% of our footprint. Mm -hmm. It's that one thing is jet fuel. Everything else, you know, recycling, we do a lot of every, everything else, but that's only 2%. And we need new engine technology, we need new sources of energy, whether it's going to be uh, hydrogen, electrification, new ways in which we propel. Mm -hmm. We're buying a lot of new planes. We bought a lot of new aircraft during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Every plane that we put in is 25% more fuel efficient than the planes were taken out. So we're, we're do, we've done a tremendous amount. We've, we've reduced our overall footprint just in the last 18 months by 5% on a per passenger basis, and those numbers will continue to improve going forward. And your airline unique because you do use a lot of Airbus jets versus the Boeing planes. We've covered the story how embattled Boeing has been with some of its different jet lines. How has that protected your business that some of those issues that Boeing has witnessed hasn't necessarily impacted your line of aircraft? Well, we've been fortunate. Airbus has been up as a supplier all through the pandemic. We've We've taken a considerable number of Airbus aircraft. You know, during these last 18 months, we're going to take more. We're taking more currently. We're going to take more out into the next few years. Uh, you know, it, I, it wasn't the reason why we chose Airbus. We chose Airbus because of the overall efficiency of the product and the customer. Uh, we, we view our customers as having a preference for for some of those models. But at the same time, I do hope Boeing gets it back because we need we need a healthy Boeing in this country, and, and Boeing will get it back. I have a lot of confidence in Dave Calhoun. Business travelers, I think that's a key focus for many different airlines out there. When do we see business travel uh, return in full force? Uh, I, I'd give it another 12 months. I, I, you know, we're back to the 50% level right now, and I think every month that goes by, you're going to see that number start to tick up. Of course, this is all dependent that there's not some other variant out there. We, we don't know of any. We don't hear of any. Our doctors tell us we should have a pretty good, good run here for a while to allow more vaccines to get into the market, antivirals, other other uh, medical solutions to keep people safe from the next variant. But you know, we're right now at 50% and I'd say 12 months from now, we should be back somewhere between 80 to 90% back. And I think some of it will be lost forever because of video technology and other you know, behavioral changes people have made. But I think there's gonna be so many new forms of travel that businesses will be, or employees that are now living in the mountains or living someplace else from their workplace, they need to get back to work. They have more flexibility about where they take vacations, how they take vacations. Travel is going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. The one thing through 9-11, through wars, through economic fuel spikes, you go back over the last 60, 70 years of air travel, the one thing you can count is it may take a dip for a year or two, it always gets back on that curve, on that line. And I'm confident because it, it, it serves such an important purpose to us in our world that people are going to return to travel for lots of reasons. Over the course of these next 12 months, what is your business outlook? Our outlook is to continue to recover our revenue base. And hopefully by the time we get to the end of 22, we'll be fully back on a revenue going into 23. And we still need to get international fully up yet. We still need to get the business travel fully up yet. Domestically, we're doing great with consumers. We're already fully back on domestic consumers. So those two pieces, international and for, we'll end the year at about 75% of our revenues restored. So we got to get that last 25%, which arguably will be the most important 25% of the recovery. All right, last question to you. A year and a half into this pandemic, we're still in recovery mode, all of us. Our biggest lessons learned at Delta Airlines? Oh, we don't have time for all the lessons. I, I would say that the single most important lesson for me and Delta is that it all gave us an opportunity to reflect on purpose. What's our purpose? Why do we do what we do? And our business was decimated. We went from the all-time high in February of 2020, this airline had never performed better than any airline in the world ever did, to only having 5% of that revenue base 30 days later. So we got our knees cut out and, and, and truly got decimated. 
And so it gave us a lot of chance to, as we rebuilt, to understand what the importance that we bring to society. The fact that we do connect people, that we do, you know, the world today still feels a very dislocated, very isolated situation, either people individually or, or as, as a society as a whole globally. And airlines bring people together and they unite the world and they bring understanding and they bring collaboration and they bring joy and they bring excitement. They bring hope back. And that's what this world needs. We need hope back. And the airlines are a big part of restoring hope. And that's what I learned. All right, Ed Bastian, CEO of Delta Airlines down here at the New York Stock Exchange for the first time as since the pandemic started. Ed, thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen.